And good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. <clears throat> Welcome to another episode of the Wisdom Transmissions Gathering here on YouTube. Looking forward to today's broadcast. We're going to be looking into quite a few different things. We're going to be looking into inner practices. I'm going to bring Adronis in for a uh, transmission. Uh, then we're going to do some Q&A, and then we're going to be ending with group healing. So I'm not going to be doing any individual healing requests today. We're just going to be doing a group healing at the end of the broadcast, and that's just generally for everybody. Okay, so before we go ahead and get started, we're going to start off with announcements. Source Energy enhanced products to repair and rejuvenate the body. <coughs> From the power of light to crystals to bed kits, card decks, and more. View our free samples, <coughs> tutorials, and testimonials on our website, etherx.co. And right now we have a 22% uh, discount store-wide off all products on Etherix. No discount code required. This is good until March 31st. And we're getting a brand new product that I'm going to be debuting tonight through the Etherix newsletter. So if you guys are already signed up to the newsletter, you'll be able to know what that new product is. If you have not signed up the news the newsletter yet, just go to etherix.co, uh, scroll down to the bottom of the home page, and you'll see a sign up form there where you can just put your name and email and you'll be added to the newsletter. If you're already a customer, you'll have the option of uh, already signing up to the newsletter. So again, brand new product is going to be rolling out tonight. It is the Super Lights. Okay, I don't have one with me. It's in the other room. <laughs> but it's the larger flashlight. I have showed it before in the past. So Super Lights are now about to come into the warehouse, uh, my warehouse in eastern uh, Canada in Ontario. So those are going to be coming in and they will be in supply. So I'm looking forward to debuting that tonight through the upcoming newsletter. So again, you can check out our source massage mats, our source flashlights, our Taurus bed kits, and of course the healing code cards. We also have more of the uh, crystals. We have selenite plates. We have uh, organite pyramids. We have all kinds of different products. So again, if you have not checked out etherix.co yet, please go ahead and do so. We have a lot of variety of products that are again, all based on scalar technology all based on biomagnetic rejuvenation technology, particularly with the upcoming Radiate app. Now again, development is going very, very well. We may be able to roll this out a little bit earlier on in April as things are looking quite good so far. <clears throat> so the website is radiateapp.com. Find out more about this revolutionary scalar and biomagnetic rejuvenation app that replenishes cells, organs, glands, bodily systems, and subtle bodies. Radiate will be available in both a free and premium version when the app launches in April of 2024, next month, and sign up through our website to get all the updates. So I'm, gonna, I'm basically putting out a Radiate uh, newsletter every Friday. Right? So there's another one coming this Friday. I'm looking forward to sharing that with you guys as well too. Uh, like I said, development is going very, very well. Even if you just download when, when Radiate is uh, ready to go, even when you just download the app, you can just use the free version. The free version is kind of like the skeleton version. It's the bare bones, but it's, again, providing some very good, uh, powerful rejuvenation for you. What you see here above at the top of the screen with the light with a circle in it and the two bars, that is a screenshot of the free version. All right. So, again, I'm looking forward to launching this Radiate. I've been really hard at work at this, just trying to get this done. <laughs> It's been a lot of hours uh, trying to get Radiate because it's not just something as simple as uh, imbuing code. I'm basically just designing the entire visualizer, helping to design the entire app, everything regarding the user interface. So it does take some time, but the good news is we're getting closer to the end of uh, wrapping up production and getting it out into the world through Google Play and through Apple Store. We're also going to be looking into getting it on Amazon apps as well too. So you can actually just download it on an Amazon TV and you can have Radiate on your TV in that way as well too. So we're going to be looking at some other ones as well too, but basically it's going to start off with Google Play, the Apple Store, and Amazon. Okay. All right, moving on. So private sessions. Private sessions are still available. New private group sessions will be discussed in an upcoming video this week. I'm going to be creating a brand new video about the upcoming uh, sessions that I'll be doing coming in April. Okay. But up until March 31st, I'm still doing private sessions, and I still have about one or two spots available. So if you are interested in doing a private session with me, now is your chance, because all of the other sessions have sold out. Okay? So again, to order a private session, you can visit wisdomtransmissions.com. But if you want to get a distance healing, if you want to look into a tarot reading, 
Uh, then I would suggest going to my girlfriend, or my, my fiance, I should say, <laughs> not girlfriend, my fiance's website. I have to change that uh, text as well, too, because it's not actually Trinity Home Healing anymore. It's been updated. Uh, let me just go ahead and do that real quickly. So it's no longer Trinity Home Healing. It is readings with Brienne.com. Okay. So that is Brienne's new website. It's readingswithbrienne.com. Okay, you can check that out. Immediate distance healing, uh, tarot reading, and more. Right, so you can check that out. Readingswithbrian.com. And of course, <clears throat> the Bosnia tour is coming up here in September. So explore the ancient Sun Pyramid, larger than the Great Pyramid of Giza. Healing chambers within the pyramid and its construction revealed by Adronis. Ancient healing practices and environmental healing, which I'll be teaching others. Uh, witnessing sacred sites and harnessing sacred power to take back home with you. So again, you can check out this exciting tour that's going to be taking place here in September, seven nights, eight days. You can register now at www.wowtours.de. I'm looking forward to that coming in September. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started today with Wisdom Transmissions Gathering. So again, hello everybody. Like I said, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening everybody. Thank you for being here. So we're going to start off with some inner practices, and then we're going to get right into an Adronis transmission today. Okay. So what we're going to be looking at today is what's known as Nadi Shodhana Pranayam, otherwise known as Anulom Valom, or we can also refer to it just as alternate nostril breathing. Okay. Now what you want to do, what's very, very helpful, is uh, if you have your, your cell phone, uh, what I would suggest you do is basically just taking an app, uh, or, or take an app called the Moon app. Right, you can just basically download it on Apple Store or on Google Play or anything of that nature, and you can uh, basically just uh, download the app there, and it will show you the certain lunar cycles. <clears throat> now, when you're in a waning moon cycle, uh, you want to actually start doing alternate nostril breathing through just the uh, left nostril. Okay, so when we're in a waning moon, we basically do the left nostril. When it's a waxing moon we would do the right nostril. So if I'm looking at a waning period, <clears throat> then I'm basically just closing the right nostril and breathing in to the left, then breathing out to the left, okay? Same thing goes if it's a waxing cycle, plugging the left nostril, breathing in to the right, breathing out to the right. But today, we're just going to be doing uh, an alom valom. We're gonna be doing nadi shodhana pranayam. So we're gonna be breathing in and out through both nostrils, okay? So we're going to start off firstly with the left nostril, where we'll be breathing in here. One, two, three, four, and then switch. One, two, three, four, breathing in. One, two, three, four, then switching again, and then out. One, two, three, four, okay? So we start off with the left nostril. We breathe in for four seconds. We switch. We breathe out for four seconds, and then we breathe in again for four seconds, okay? So, uh, I'm just going to be one moment here, guys. One second. Okay. Oh, okay. I thought somebody, thought somebody was at my door, but no. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so we're going to go ahead and do that together. Uh, we're just going to do uh, Nadi Shodhana Pranayam. So we're going to be starting off with the left nostril, okay? So we're going to plug the right nostril first, taking a deep breath in. One, two, three, four, and then switch. One, two, three, four, and inhale. One, two, three, four, and switch. One, two, three, four, inhale. One, two, three, four, switch. One, two, three, four. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Switch, one, two, three, four. Inhale, one, two, three, four. And switch, one, two, three, four. And inhale, one, two, three, four. Switch, one, two, three, four. Inhale, one, two, three, four, switch, one, two, three, four, inhale, one, two, three, four, and switch, one, two, three, four, inhale, one, two, three, four,
four and switch. One, two, three, four. Inhale. One, two, three, four. Switch last time. One, two, three, four. And relax. Okay? So when you're doing the switching of the nostrils, <clears throat> we're basically just using two fingers. We're using the thumb and we're using the ring finger. Okay? So we're basically just kind of keeping it closed. I can't really do it too well with this hand. But we're keeping it closed, uh, keeping these two hands uh, closed and just working with the thumb and the ring finger. So the, the thumb is going here on the right nostril, the ring finger is going here on the left nostril, and we're just alternating, right? So that's the alternate nostril breathing. So what this does is you can almost look at this as a pre-pranayama. What it's doing is it's actually just cleansing out your nadi channels. The ida nadi, which represents the left channel, and the uh, pingala nadi, which represents the right channel, okay? And what we're doing is we're bringing in the vayu, we're bringing in the air, we're bringing in the prana, and what that's doing is that's helping to clear out, clear out those nadi channels. This is very, very good if you're doing deep meditation. This is very good if you're cleaning the chakras. This is very good if you're looking to go into kundalini, right? Actually working with kundalini uh, preparation as well, too. So it's kind of like a preparatory, a preparatory, I should say, <laughs> preparatory uh pranayama experience and it does really really well it does a really great health has great health benefits with your lungs has great health benefits with your nervous system it also helps to bring yourself into the parasympathetic nervous system as well too as you continue to do this so again with many other pranayama uh, breath control techniques that i've taught this one is also quite invaluable right so you can usually do it at the very start or you can do it at the very end of your own pranayama practice. So give that a try, keep working with it. We're just doing four in and four out for now, but then they start to change. We're actually, we have a short inhale and then a longer exhale. So we may breathe in for four seconds and then breathe out for six, or we may breathe in for four and then breathe out for eight, right? So again, we're kind of reflecting heart rate variability. We're also reflecting rachaka at the same time. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead now and go into an Adronis transmission. And Adronis is gonna come through and share some very uh, interesting information about a particular topic. So I'm looking forward to bringing him in momentarily. So <clears throat> when uh, that happens, he'll give his presentation afterwards. We'll go into Q&A, all right? And we'll take uh, the questions that you guys have. I'm already seeing a few questions on the chat, so that's great. So I'll go ahead and bring him in and we will begin the transmission. Here we go. <clears throat> Tira. We are here at this time. We bid you greetings and thank you very much for the opportunity of this interaction today. I am Adronis of Sirius, sending love, appreciation, and gratitude to all who are tuning in to this broadcast being brought forward through your internet collective consciousness. What we'd like all of you to do at this time is simply allow yourselves to get relaxed, get comfortable, and tune in to the vibrations of Sirius so that you may synchronize, harmonize, and align to all of the information that we have to share. Also understand that all of the information that we shall provide today is simply that of our perspective, our point of view. For all knowledge, all information, all creation itself resides within your very hearts, beings, and souls. We will talk to you specifically about 
the immune system of the Earth. Now, what is happening upon the planet right now really is no more different than what may happen at some particular point with yourselves as you go through a cleansing or detoxification experience. It's really no more different than having the flu. It's no more different than laying down in bed and just allowing the body to process everything that needs to happen so the body can, in time, eventually rejuvenate itself completely. Well, that is exactly what the Earth is going through right now. She has been chronically ill for thousands of years. Now, that's very important to remember. Your Earth has been chronically ill for thousands of years. And that chronic illness, in that sense, is all part of her shedding a lot of these other particular forms of, shall we say, toxicities and debris from herself. Because the earth herself has been poisoned. She has been poisoned many thousands of years ago. And it was starting to move much more into a terminal case. Now, this is not a fatal poisoning, but it is a poisoning that represents, in that sense, a form of metamorphosis that will enable the earth to get well again. But the poisoning represents a dark time. It represents a dark time for her. It's basically, as you would say, her own dark night of the soul as well. So for thousands of years, she has been contaminated. She has been polluted. She has been, in that sense, intoxicated by a great deal of debris. And that this particular debris is all about the idea of what you would know as separation consciousness. A bug of separation consciousness has entered the earth and has been here for many thousands of years. And it has taken a great deal of time for her to finally now get the strength to start to overcome this bug. So what is the earth's medicine? What medicine does the earth take to help her overcome this bug? It's the sun. The sun is her giver of medicine. So when many of you are so concerned about the idea of solar storms or feeling that there is going to be a vicious solar event taking place, you do not understand the relationship between the sun and your earth. You do not understand the relationship between your sun and the planets that inhabit this star system. Because the sun is not here to destroy his children. The planets are his children. Why do you believe the sun would try to destroy his children? It is no more different that even though the mother has put up with a great deal of strife and conflict and suffering on behalf of her earth children, she would never destroy them. That's the idea. That's a mother's love. That's a parental love. And the son himself also represents that parental love he has for all of his children that orbit him. So when you're looking at all of these particular solar storms, when you're looking at the nature of plumes taking place from the sun, that is the sun's giving essence. That is its magnetism that it is spreading out throughout the entire star system, remedying his children of these particular illnesses. Because it's not just the Earth that's been sick, she's probably been sick the most, but other planets have also become ill in this star system as well too. This entire star system has basically had, if we're looking at a gardening term, it has bad crop. And so that is exactly what's looking to be purged out from the planets, specifically with the Earth, because she has the most potency of these forms of toxins. So when your sun is actually giving out these plumes of magnetism to where the Earth is absorbing that within her own magnetic field and bringing it into her own interior, and then you see what's commonly referred to in your language as the Aurora Borealis. The Aurora Borealis is really no more different 
than her own type of defecation. It is no more different than her own sneezing. It is a waste product. Aurora Borealis is a waste product of the earth. So what she's doing is she's coughing, she's defecating, she's excreting a great deal of these toxins out of her so that she can now get well again. Now what's taking place is that as this energetic starts to absorb itself directly into the earth, her immune system starts to build up. Her immune system starts to get stronger. Well, what is the earth's immune system? You. You are her immune system. You are the white blood cells. You are the T cells. You are the cancer killers. You are responsible for that. So <clears throat> what happens is as the earth now starts to get charged up, the cells of her body, the immune system, now starts to get charged up as well. As that charging takes place, a lot of old veils start to collapse. As these old veils collapse, a great deal of information that was hidden behind the scenes originally is now being revealed. It's like watching an illusion starting to fade away where you see all these people who you felt that you could trust now starting to show their true colors. You're starting to see events taking place upon the planet that really cannot be denied, that represent a greater agenda, that represented oppression, suppression, suffering, conflict. All of these particular events are taking place because the earth is basically coughing them out. The earth is getting so incredibly charged that you're getting charged along with her. The animals are getting charged along with her. Nature is getting charged along with her. Her entire body is now being restructured. And this is a restructuring process that will still continue itself for quite a few more years to come. But what's happening is that she's building a new body. A new body is being arranged. She will still be the earth. She will still appear as she appears. She will still have the life that she has upon her surface, but she is being restructured in a new way. She's being restructured on a cellular level. She's being much more restructured on an energetic level. A metamorphic level is being restructured here. She's attuning her own toroidal field to move it much more into harmonious integration and harmonic convergence. And you are going along for the ride. Like what you see with what's happening on the earth to which we have previously analogized is like you having your own flu. So when you're going through this flu and maybe you're getting quite a bit of medicine to helping yourself out so that those cells within your body are now starting to charge. Now there's a lot of cells in that sense that are recharging, but there's also certain cells that are dying off because their damage is just too severe and they cannot recuperate. But that is all right because the majority of the cells within your body are now being replenished and through the replenishment comes new fresh cells. The exact same thing is happening with humanity. You have these old dying out cells who basically have given up upon themselves, who do not wish to make themselves better, where you say, here's the medicine, and they just shoo it away, and they basically decay themselves into death. You are going to have humans on this planet that are doing that. As much as you want to help them and take care of them, they're not willing to do that for themselves. And so therefore they pass on. But through that comes new cells, new cells that are coming upon this planet, that are incarnating upon this planet, that are, as we would say, geniuses. You are now moving into a wave of consciousness where the amount of new human beings coming upon your planet are going to be incredible geniuses. If you think your Nikola Tesla was something, you haven't seen anything yet. Do you think any of these great experts, 
these brainiacs, as you often call them, were something, you have not seen anything yet. You are looking at a new wave, a new wave of geniuses that are coming upon the planet that have, in that sense, a greater and sturdier makeup to their own incarnation design, which means they will be completely resilient to corruption. They will have, in that sense, a laser-pointed focus to assisting in building all of these new innovations for the Earth to helping humanity working together with their planet. And that this new era is really going to start shining as you move into your next generation, into your 2030s, into your 2040s. As we have stated, the innovation for greater change upon your planet is going to come through your youth. It's not going to come through your seniors. Right? They're still stuck in a lot of their old ways. Some of them can think outside the box, but it's not a large number. It's very few and far between. No, what is actually going to bring about greater innovation that is in larger numbers will be coming through your children, coming through your youth. And they will not even consider the idea of trying to think that greed is greater than salvation. That greed is greater than service. That greed is greater than the assistance of the fellow brothers and sisters upon their planet. So the immune system is going to be getting a boost. It's going to be getting an injection of new incarnations of human beings that are again so incredibly ingenious that you will start moving off into the space, into the solar system, into the interstellar nature of yourself within the next couple of decades. Because that is how ingenious these new children are. They will actually be able to go into a room and they can tell a lot of the adults who have been there for a very long time what they're missing, what they're not seeing. And being able to bring about greater states of innovations that will further your planet exponentially. This is the new immune system that's coming together. You are the immune system of the earth. And she is going through this charge. She's breaking her fever. And now you're seeing all of these old decayed foundations that represent the old virus are now starting to fade away. And they are going to continue to break down. Their foundations are going to continue to crumble. And you will be there to clean up all of that mess because you're going to build something new. You're going to build something grand. You're going to build something that will stand the test of time because you're now going to reintegrate the ancients. You are going to reintegrate the ancient technology. <clears throat> when you're looking at these ancient structures, these ancient temples, you are going to start spending a lot more time on that type of science. That type of science that represents etheric technology that represents sacred technology, geometrical harmonic technology, the type of technology that completely and totally expands you, that rejuvenates your body, that charges you up. Just like you're seeing with what Brad is creating with Radiate, what others are working together with Taurus technology, Taurus field technology, subtle vibrational technology, scalar technology, biomagnetism, etc. That's your technology of the future. But you will notice that through the power of the subtle energy, you're going to develop all kinds of technologies that will be profound, that will have no limits to their capability. The idea of using fossil fuels and coal and nuclear power is Neanderthal. And you're going to see all of those particular forms of institutions crumble because you're going to see new innovations coming together that are a thousand times more powerful, that are a thousand times more cleaner and a thousand times more beneficial for your people and for the earth herself. You are going to start moving into the subtle wave. So this is coming within the next couple of decades. This is not going to be done right away, but it is something that, again, seeds are being planted into the ground right now, and they are being nurtured because of all the old, dirty roots that many of you have pulled out from the ground. You've pulled them out, you've thrown them upon the surface, and you're lighting them ablaze. 
And what's coming out now are these new seeds that you are planting because the earth is getting charged and she's going to start moving back into the old ways. And the old ways are going to be the modern ways. You are going to notice that the indigenous populations of your planet are going to be bestowed authority upon many lands in your times ahead. That your Native Americans, that your Aboriginals, that your indigenous people are going to return back into authority. And that this is still going to take some time, but that's really where it's going to lead. The indigenous people are going to be taking their role to the next level where they're going to help to educate a lot of you. The indigenous people are going to be part of certain events that is going to lead them into greater leadership and teaching many of you about how to go back to the earth, about how to live through the earth again. And that is going to happen as you get through this cycle right now. This cycle representing old corruption, representing decay and turmoil. All of that turbulence needs to go. As the smoke clears, you will notice that many of your indigenous people are going to be appealing the nature of them coming back into the authority of their own lands. That's what's going to be taking place. Canada, the United States, Australia, much of Europe. Many of these places are going to be moving back into indigenous connections where they will still work a lot with the modern technology at the time, but they will stress the importance of the nature of working together in fellowship. They will teach you a lot more about community. And so the indigenous people of your planet are going to take a very strong leadership role, including with much of their children. So there is, again, a very powerful time that is ahead, but you are getting out of this cycle, as we've talked about. It is a cycle to where this decade represents cleanup. It's cleaning up the debris. It's cleaning up the filth. It's cleaning up the turmoil. It's clearing out the turbulence so that you can now renew and refresh yourself in a greater direction where much of your indigenous people are going to take the authoritative role. So this is all part and parcel of Earth building up her immune system to move forward in a healthier way, to move forward in a much more expansive way as she rebuilds her entire infrastructure into the harmony of the being that she has always been. We thank you very much for the opportunity of this interaction today, and we will now begin with your question and answer period. Thank you very much, and one moment, please. <sighs> Okay, very beautiful message there from Adronis. So that is going to be very interesting. Like we've talked about before in the past, the children really are going to be picking up the ball. They're going to be picking up a lot of the things that a lot of the grown-ups have dropped. Okay, and this is, again, just reminding you the honoring of the children, the honoring about their intelligence, because you are really looking at a new species of human that is coming together on this planet. And they do not think in the way that the previous generations think. They are completely different. And they can't help it. That's how they're designed. That's how they're imprinted. Right? It's going to be a new, uh, beautiful time ahead. And especially as well, too, seeing much more of the indigenous people starting to come back into leadership roles. That, too, is going to be wonderful as well. Okay. So why don't we go ahead and get started today with some questions. So I think we had one or two donations here. I'm just going to see if I can find it. Okay, I have one donation here. So this one here is from Amanda. Thank you, Amanda, for your donation. Amanda says, Adronis, can you speak on the flower of life called the daisy of death and the fallen Fibonacci spiral versus organic crystal spiral? Okay. Well, there's many different names for it, but we'll look into the nature of alignment with it. Okay, one moment. <clears throat> We thank you very much for your question. To look into the nature of the flower of life in its original design is to look at the face of the universe. It is to look at the entire morphogenic field. It's to look at the torus field. It's to look at the hyperboloid. It's to look at the very structure that is responsible for all life. 
Now, any contortion of that particular geometry represents a distortion. If you are not keeping it intact in regards to its original design, then basically what you are doing is you are contaminating its effect. You are twisting the field. You see? This is the difference. If you start twisting the field, if they start calling it the daisy of death, then you're looking at inversions. You're looking at contortions. You're looking at twists. We suggest you don't twist it. We suggest you don't contort it. We suggest that you look at it in its prime nature because that is the omnipresent geometry that is the structure that represents your entire field of life. So it's not about this versus that. There is no versus. Versus is indicating the nature of a duality. When you're looking at the flower of life, that is it. If you distort that, you ruin its original configuration. If you twist it, if you invert it, if you corrupt it, you twist away its original harmony. There's nothing else to it. You see it in its primordial nature. And therefore, that is what you see through the harmony to which all life itself springs from. It is from that harmonic geometry that is the 144 faces of God that represents life through the field, through the infinite potential of the ether. All right? We thank you for your question. Okay. Thank you, Amanda, for your question. Let's go to uh, Anna here. Anna has a question. Uh, hello, Brad and Jonas. My sleep is very disrupted by waking up often. Also, at waking, I feel pretty exhausted from my dreams. What can I do to improve both? Okay, so you need to detoxify your body. This is indication of a toxic body. So we need to clean up our diet. Okay, so we need to be aware about what we're eating. How do we feel after we eat that? With our common meals that we have each day, are we eating something that completely supercharges our body? Are we doing activities that complement the nature of ourselves, where we feel charged, where we feel inspired, where we feel joyful? Or are we feeling the opposite? Are we feeling sluggish? Are we feeling worried? Are we feeling anxious? Because basically what's happening is you're taking all of that heavy pressure and you're sinking it right down to the bottom of the digestive system, okay? And down here is also emotional trouble. Down here is mental problems, okay? It really just starts to fester itself in the gut, even though the brain, the central uh, point here, and of course the belly may be going through some detriments. All of that's moving down into the lower base of yourself. It's like this gigantic weight, and it's just sinking to the bottom of your ocean at the seabed. We need to clear out that gigantic heavy weight that's preventing us from sleeping well, that's disrupting our sleeping patterns. Because again, what you put in your body is extremely important. This body is made out of what? What is this body made out of? It's made out of food. It's a food body, okay? Everything that you put into your body is going to reflect through your appearance. It's gonna reflect through the appearance of how your body is. Are you eating well? Right? Are you eating charged food? Are you eating food that is tremendously good for you? Is it packed full of nutrients? Or is it just a bunch of filler food? Is it basically just a lot of food that's trying to satisfy you for 30 seconds and then all of that garbage and gunk plummets down to the base of your seabed and you just start feeling lousy? You feel lousy, you feel terrible, you feel completely expunged of energy altogether. So what you put in your body you need to evaluate, okay? If I'm eating a bunch of meat, if I'm eating a bunch of processed foods, if I'm eating a bunch of salt-saturated uh, salt, uh, uh, foods, if I'm eating a bunch of sugars, right? All of that's toxins, all of that's poison. I need to look at my outer environment. Are there people in my life that are complimenting me or am I constantly fighting with people all the time, right? What is my household environment like? Am I constantly fighting or is there goodness in the home? That's something else I need to look at. How am I taking care of myself? How am I working with myself? Am I just kind of laying about doing nothing? Or am I basically spending a lot of my day arguing with people? Am I spending a lot of my day fighting with people? Or is there a peace 
Is there a peace within myself that I'm brewing and that I'm continuing to expand a lot more? Okay, these are all reflections, Anna, of yourself. And this is not just for Anna, but this is for many of you because I get so many people who are saying this, that they have bad sleep disturbance, they wake up often, they feel exhausted from their dreams because your body is toxic, right? You are putting toxicity in your body physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, okay? All of that's got to be cleaned up. And this is why I say it's so very important because I've taught my students this for years, that it's very important that you have a notebook handy and you're writing things down. It does not have to be a novel sized uh, post, but you're just writing simple things down. How was my day? How was my day structured? Another very simple exercise that even the Rosicrucians would learn that I found was quite helpful as well too, is that at the end of their day, maybe like an hour before they go to bed, they reflect on their day backwards. So they reflect on everything that took place in that day. Okay, I had this dinner. I had a fight with my sibling. I had a fight with my partner, right? I go back, you know, it was traffic and I was groaning about traffic and I go back earlier and it was just a horrible day at work. Everybody was grumpy and horrible and I started soaking all of that in as well too. Then I go back into the morning and there was more traffic on top of that. And then I was in the morning, I was trying to get everybody ready to go to school. And I just felt depressed and I felt horrible and I had these horrible dreams, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's in your notebook. You're, re, you're unraveling your day backwards. And what this does is this tells you, what can I do to improve the next day? If I'm looking at all of these things where I'm just feeling exhausted and I'm trying to help other people and get people there and they're ungrateful and blah, 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 blah. What is that telling me? means I'm coming into this from a sluggish attitude and I'm just putting more sluggishness towards others and that sluggishness is coming back to me. Which means all of this sluggishness, all of this pain, all of this suffering, all of this aching is basically being part of my daily routine. So do I expect anything better to come out of that if that is my state? If my state that represents my bridge that is formed here is bringing nothing but slurry water, is bringing nothing but mud and toxic water over my bridge, do I think that I'm actually gonna get some pristine water with that? No. I need to redevelop my bridge. I'm not going to be funneling a sewer system here. I want the pristine waters. I want the crystal clear waters. So what does that entail? That entails me working better with my food. That entails me working good with taking care of myself, giving myself good maintenance. I'm exercising a lot more. I'm burning off a lot of toxicity in the body. I'm supplementing. I'm taking good care of myself. I'm also reflecting upon myself and I'm doing a lot of inner work. I'm forgiving a lot of things. I'm making peace with a lot of things. I'm learning to smile a lot. I can look in the mirror and I can say, I love you without trying to turn away or not even think that I could do anything like that. I'm not letting the ego sabotage me, right? Because like I said, it's genetic, okay? So you keep getting into all of these sluggish behaviors. Anna, this is exactly the, the quality that you're going through pretending to your sleep disturbance because there's sluggishness in you because your body's toxic. You are physically toxic. You are emotionally toxic. You are mentally toxic. You are spiritually toxic right? And in order for us to really tackle this, we need to do a review. What's often what I refer to, again, what the Rouge Accrucians will do, is I refer to this as the reverse review. The daily reverse review. One hour before going to bed, sit down with yourself, reflect on your day backwards. From that point in the evening, going back into the afternoon, going back into the morning, back to when you first woke up and you are evaluating your day. You're giving yourself a life review. It's a daily reverse life review. And you're looking at your day and saying, is this the most potent and pure day that I could imagine myself being a part of? No, definitely not. What can I do to change that? And I make simple changes along the way. 
right? So rather than feeling all grumbly in the morning in that way, I'm going to spend tonight just meditating and putting intentions of goodness into myself. I'm going to intend good dreams. I'm going to intend a loving experience as I go to sleep to, to, uh, tonight. And when I wake up in the morning, I'm just going to say a word that is going to really brighten my day. I may say luminescent. I may say brilliant. I may say radiant. And I'm going to say that just as soon as I wake up. Brilliant. And as soon as I do that, oh my goodness, my morning starts going so well. People are cooperating. I'm working together in harmony because all I did was I planted a seed. I meditated for a while. I started bringing my energy up. I started charging myself with the breath as Brad teaches because he teaches about heart rate variability. He teaches about rachaka. Teaches about breathing in for four seconds, breathing out for eight seconds. I did that. I did that for about 10 minutes. And I felt supercharged. I felt great. I felt my body just going into the deeper brainwave states. And I just said, okay, I'm going to say this word in the morning. Brilliant. And I'm going to feel a difference. And I wake up in the morning. I remember to say that. Brilliant. Everything just starts coming together. What did you do? You planted a seed. Right? And that's what you're doing. You're planting seeds. And now rather than me having my eggs and toast and coffee, I'm going to have some fruit. Maybe I'll have a grapefruit. Maybe I'll have an apple. Maybe I'll have a fruit salad. I'm going to have something very healthy this morning. Right? Instead of coffee, I'm going to make this really delicious, nutritious smoothie. And I have that. My energy level just shoots through the roof. And I reflect upon my night last night, and I had a really smooth, beautiful dream. Nothing was disturbed because I wasn't disturbed. And that's what I'm doing. I'm planting these seeds in the subconscious. I'm ripping out these old roots from the subconscious. I'm tossing it on the fire, and I'm planting these new seeds. Brilliance, radiance, joy, abundance, harmony, happiness, love. Right? These are all the seeds that I'm planting in my garden. I'm not trying to grow disgusting food in my garden anymore that is going to contaminate me, that's going to make me feel sluggish. I'm going to start eating better. I'm going to start eating for the body, not for my ego. My ego wants a bag of chips. My ego wants to drown itself in chocolate. My ego wants to put a bunch of sugar in my body. My ego wants me to drink alcohol. My ego wants me to smoke cigarettes. My ego wants me to go to drugs. So what the ego wants? What is the ego? A gene? A shadow gene of myself? So why the hell am I trying to satisfy a gene? Why am I trying to, feel, to satisfy a genetic trinity in myself? Why am I trying to satisfy a knot? A contortion? A tension in myself? Why am I trying to satisfy that? How about I eat for the body? How about I replenish myself for the body? How about I get myself into great thinking to harmonize the mind? How about I bring myself into that state of calmness to enrich my spirit so that my physical, emotional, mental, spiritual self is shining brightly and radiant? You need to start thinking about how you can serve your body, how you can serve your mind, how you can serve your spirit, not the ego, right? And that all starts off with subtlety. That all starts off with simplicity. That starts off with the simple things, right? Instead of eating this, I'm going to eat that because I'm going to work with the body. I'm going to get my body into great shape. If I'm 60 years old, doesn't matter. I can start doing this, and within several months, I will feel a difference, a major difference. If I'm 75, I can do this. If I'm 80, I can do this. Okay. If I'm 10, I can do this. If I'm 15, I can do this. If I'm 25, I can do this. If I'm 37, I can do this. If I'm 45, I can do this. Doesn't matter your age. What matters is your attitude. Cross out age. Okay and go into the attitude of yourself, that your attitude is going to change, that your mentality is going to change, that your emotional structuring is going to change, that your physicality is going to change, and you're bringing in goodness. If I don't have goodness in my life, how do I expect to bring goodness into it?
can't be done because right now I'm a sewer pipe and I'm just pumping a bunch of sewage through the pipe which means my sluggishness, which means my illnesses, which means my toxicities, everything physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually I'm a sewer drain so I need to get out of sewer drain mentality and I need to start building this beautiful aqueduct and this aqueduct is bringing about the most pristine of waters why? Because I'm taking care of my physicality, because I'm taking care of my emotionality, because I'm taking care of my mentality, because I'm taking care of myself spiritually. Nobody is going to do it for me. This is my job. They have to focus on them. Brad's got to focus on himself. This other expert's got to focus on himself or herself. So I have to rely on me. And I know what is good. All of you know what's good. You just don't think you deserve it. And that's the problem. Right? It's really the whole idea is that can I make a simple garden? Can I go to a farmer's market? Can I go somewhere locally where I can just pick up produce? That's all you really need. Guys, I'm moving much more into fruits and vegetables right now. I'm actually staying off meat quite a bit. The only other meat I'm really having right now may be fish, and that's about it. But everything else, from chicken, from beef, from ham, from all that stuff, all that's going away. And I'm just starting to eat more fruits. I'm eating about 75% of fruits today, uh, yesterday, the day before. And it's been making a tremendous difference, right? And you got to think about the food body, not the ego body, not that little knot. I would say really a big knot that is telling you, satisfy me, satisfy me, give me satisfaction that lasts five seconds and then the rest of the day you're groaning about it right this is what you really need to think of not just for Anna but for all of you it's a very big topic all right so Anna thank you for sharing that and I want you guys to reflect on what I've shared here with you today can't emphasize how much how important it truly is okay all right let's go on to another question here thank you again for your donation based questions Okay, so this one here is from Catalan. Catalan says, Adronis, my dreams are extremely vivid. There are nights where I have many, many dreams. What does that mean? Please teach us about the nature of dreams, their significance, and their role. Blessings. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. I will bring Adronis in, and he can talk a little bit more about dreams. Right. <clears throat> We thank you very much, Catalan, for your question regarding dreams. Well, as we have talked about previously, when you are in dreams, you are in your psyche. All right? You are looking at your own field, and you're exploring your own field in ways that physicality cannot explore, it, and this is exactly why you have dreams. You call them dreams, but really they are experiences. When you call them dreams on your planet, you very much think, very little about the nature of a dream. Oh, it was just a dream. This just happened. It was a dream. It was no big deal. Let it go. But it was an experience. It was an experience no more different than the experience you have here in physical awoken life. What you're doing is you're experiencing everything from within your psyche, taking a tour of yourself. Because this is where the higher self is being the architect. Your own soul is being the architect and it's showing you all of these things. Some of you may notice that you are aware of having dozens of dreams or hundreds of dreams. Some of you may just remember one long consistent dream. And that's just all based in regards to what the architect wants to show you. So again, when you look at these other planes where you feel like you're in another body, you feel like you have another personality, you have all of these capabilities, you're able to fly through the air, you're able to breathe underwater, you're able to teleport from one place to another, etc. These all may seem very exciting, but that's not the point. The whole idea in that sense is letting you know how you're feeling about yourself through the psyche as you experience these realms. These realms are telling you about different things. They are not trying to be literal to you. They are telling you a lot more about symbolisms. 
in the dream. Because again, it's you exploring your psyche. And it really cannot be explained through conventional means. You have to have these analogies to which the dreams are attempting to tell you. The dreams themselves are a language. If you don't know how to speak the dream language, you're not really going to understand what your dreams are telling you. If you feel like, for example, that you are underwater and you're able to stride absolutely no problem whatsoever, that's telling you that you are very, very good with handling your emotions. If you are, again, in another way, in water, and even if it's just a small amount, you feel like you're drowning in it. That means you can't handle your emotional state whatsoever. So what it's telling you is it's giving you these significators. It's telling you these symbolisms. You're seeing a gigantic tidal wave thousands of feet high, and you're just freaking out because this represents a trauma. And it's erupting from the water, and it's like a gigantic tidal wave that you feel is going to encompass you. And now you see a city being devastated by a tidal wave, and you think that's what's going to happen in physical reality. Wrong. This is your own infrastructure. This is your own city. This is your own mind. And it's being overtaken by a powerful emotional force, and it's wiping you out. Oh, but Adronis, I saw New York City and I saw this gigantic tidal wave encompassing it. Oh my goodness, New York City, it's going to have a tidal wave. Wrong. That New York City is your mind. That's your subconscious. And that's what's getting wiped out. You have enabled a very powerful trauma within yourself to wipe out much of your own infrastructure with how you see things, which means your world's about to get turned upside down. It's the same thing as if a person's dreaming about a meteor streaming towards the earth, screaming with all might, and then creating an enormous impactful explosion upon a city. And now you think that's literally going to happen to the earth. Wrong. It's your world that's being impacted. It's not the earth. So this is what we're talking about. If you don't understand the symbolism, if you do not know the language of dreams, you are going to misconstrue them. And then you're so fearful about trying to step outside because you think everything is going to explode. Everything's going to lead to a great disaster. I should stay away from a beach. I live in New York City. I shouldn't go near the harbor. I shouldn't go near the harbor whatsoever. There's a gigantic wave coming. Why do you feel that? Oh, because I saw it in my dreams. No, it has to do with you, not the collective world. And the majority of that is basically what is being said. It's happening to you, not the world. It's happening to your world. So as we talked about previously, looking into the dreams is the exploration of your own psyche. We could spend hours and hours and hours talking about this. But if you do not know the language of dreams, there really is no point. To understand the language of dreams, you have to be well-versed with symbolism. And if you do not know symbolism, you may want to learn to educate yourself with it. Because that is what the dreams are primarily talking to you about. Symbolism, analogy, parables. That's how the dream world works. It's not going to come to you and give you a straight answer because a lot of these concepts that are going through with you are beyond common answers. And they need to be played out in scenarios. And your mind is so incredibly intelligent, it knows how to bring this to you. It's actually showing you a story. This is your hardship right now. This is the catastrophe, but this is how you rebound from it. And if you learn to pay attention to your dreams, if you learn to speak the language, you'll be able to realize exactly how to navigate the dreams to moving into very blissful states helping you to move into the center of the mind to where you now come face to face with the divine. But right now, you're just jumping through hoops. You're going through hurdles because your own physical life is full of turmoil. And if it's full of turmoil, your dreams are going to reflect that. Whereas, again, if you're feeling that you're moving yourself up in a much more higher state, your dreams are going to reflect that as well, too. You may have the odd dream here and there that's telling you about correcting something that you have not seen. But that is what the dreams do. 
Yes, some of you may have one consistent dream. Some of you will have many. It doesn't matter. This isn't a race. It's all about certain subjects that need to be shown to you at that night, through that alignment, through that magnetism, based on how you are in harmony with yourself. To see all of those things happening before you. But again, if you are not certain of the dream, you need to be more familiar with symbolism. You need to be aware of the five elements. That's really what it comes down to. If I'm seeing a bunch of hard edges of mountain ranges that are surrounding me, then this is basically telling me my own stubbornness, my own arrogance, my own ego, because I'm very, very fixated, I'm narrow-minded, I'm jagged around people. If I'm seeing a very smooth, broad valley, I'm open to everything. I'm opening myself up to new possibilities, to new potentials. If I'm constantly drowning myself in the water, my emotions are dominating me. Whereas if I'm stepping into a beautiful pond that is so still that I can walk across it just like Jesus did and sit right in the middle without it being disturbed, you have a tranquil emotional mind. If I see nothing but raging fire and I'm afraid that it's going to burn me, well, there's your temperament. There's your anger. There's your actions that are, again, working against you. Whereas if I'm in a room with a thousand candles and all of them are just burning to bring about a beautiful luminescence so that I can see the beauty surrounding the art in this room, then you are tranquil with your actions. You are tranquil with your temperament. You see? So you're looking at the elements and seeing what each of them represent. You're looking at these simple symbolisms and seeing what they represent. Because the most important thing out of a dream is how you feel about it. How it made you feel tells you everything, even if you don't speak the language. It is that beautiful feeling that you may have from a tranquil dream where that carries you throughout the entire day because you had a tranquil experience. And that dream is showing you that you've been able to achieve a great tranquility because you've moved yourself into higher ground. Or it could be the opposite. It could be a horrifying dream and it's haunting you all day long. Rather than being able to see what it's doing and being able to neutralize that, you hold on to it like it's a shackle. You see? So again, dreams are a very expansive and explorative topic, but this is really what we can share. You are exploring your dreams because they are your psyche. You are exploring your dreams to get yourself to realize who you are that is holding on to these things. It's really unconscious meditation. That's what dreams are. It is going into unconscious meditative states, helping you to see all of these hurdles, all of these blockades that you put around yourself so that you can realize that they're there so that they can soften through what you do through your physical daily life because they're connected. You don't have to go back into the dream time and think, I need to have that exact same dream again so that I know how to correct it. Well, it's not going to happen. Because the same dream doesn't happen twice. It's telling you about what you can do in the physical world. It's being your guide. It is the language of the architect. And it's telling you, if you start working together in this way, you start softening your edges through what you do in physical awoken life, your dreams are going to change. You're going to be able to harmonize that landscape. And there will be other landscapes for you to look into to which you're harmonizing through your actions of the physical awoken life. Not about you trying to change your dreams. Not about you trying to control your dreams. You're wasting your time. It is all about what you're able to accomplish here in the physical awoken life. That's your curriculum. That's what you have responsibility and conscious awareness of, is the curriculum of the awoken physical life. By what you have been able to witness through the dreams that are going through your landscape of the psyche that tell you, correct this, correct this, take care of that, harmonize that, work with this, bring yourself into a tranquility here. 
and you start doing it through physical life. And now the dreams just start to become more and more tranquil, where there really isn't even dreams right now. It's just a smoothness. And you sleep throughout the entire night. Not even really, I didn't really have a dream. I just slept well. It's because you cleaned your landscape. It's because you cleaned your psyche. And that's what the dream is doing. It is interweaving itself with the physical awoken state of life to helping you clean house, to clean yourself. And all you need to take out from your dreams is how it made you feel if you do not know how to speak the dream language. All right. Thank you for your question. Okay, very good. Thank you, Catalan, for asking that. I think that's a good standalone video by that one itself, too, about dreams. <laughs> so I get a lot of questions over the years about dreams. Like, I've learned to interpret dreams many times. But the thing I've noticed about interpreting dreams is that it's always going to be subjective, right? Even if I suggest this with a, th with a person, they may have a different idea about it. And this is why I basically let the higher self come in and do the interpretation, right? And that's something I do, I'll do with uh, sessions as well, too, for certain people who have had dreams, I want to know what they mean, or really I would just say, how did it make you feel? That's the first part. How does it make you feel? Then we can elaborate a little bit more on the dream sequence. But like I said, the actions that you need to commit are not in the dreams themselves. It's in awoken life. Awoken life is where you're basically playing the chess game, and that's where you can move the pieces. And all the dreams showing you is where all these different pieces could be and what you're not seeing by moving that piece there, etc. It's evaluation, it's exploration, it's witnessing, it's observing yourself, right? Then coming into a woke in life, moving the pieces better, putting the pieces in the proper place. That's an idea of it, okay? Thank you, Catalin, for your question. Okay, uh, how are we doing on time here? 11.09, okay, so we're probably gonna take about two or three more questions. So we had some big, big questions that needed a lot of long answers today so far. Okay, so this one here is from Mihail. Mihail says, Hello, Brad. Will active longevity and life expectancy of 100 plus years be available in the next decade? No. Okay, because you're not going to be able to discover how to live 100 years if you're 30 years old right now. <laughs> okay, so basically, in that sense, that's going to be something that's going to be available throughout later on in the century. But like I said, you're never going to know how long you live until you take a last breath, right? So if you're 30 years old and you're going into this technology, you're putting yourself in Radiate, you're putting yourself in EE systems, and you're, long, you're bringing great longevity to yourself, that's great, but that's how you are right now, right? What's going to happen in 20 years, 30 years, 50 years, etc.? Well, that's up to you, okay? So longevity technology is not really ever going to be known for at least several more decades, okay? We're on the right track. Like I said, if you're using Radiate all the time and you're eating well, right? And you're governing yourself well, I could say you could definitely live over, over a century, right? I could say the same thing with EE systems as well, too. You're eating well, you're, you're taking good care of yourself mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, right? You're going to live well over a century, no problem. And it doesn't matter if that person is 75 or 80 years old right now, okay? They spend the next one, two years cleaning themselves up, they're going to add 10, 15, 20 years to their life, okay? The more you have to look at this as a harmonious investment. It's not a it's not a bank scam, okay? It's a life investment that you're bringing upon yourself. Taking good care of the body. I need to evaluate exactly how I'm living my daily life. What am I going through in my daily life? Am I constantly fighting? Am I constantly arguing? Am I constantly wanting to hurt people? And that's what's got to change, right? Are you being a sewer pipe or are you being an aqueduct for divine waters? That's the whole idea. If I'm working as a sewage pipe, then I'm going to have nothing but crap in my life. And I'm going to feel like crap, and my dreams are going to be crap, and I'm going to hardly sleep because I feel like crap. And everybody's yelling at me because I feel like crap, right? So I'm a sewage pipe. So do I want to spend the rest of the days on this planet as a sewage pipe? I need to start cleaning myself up. Cleaning myself up physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. And if I don't do that, I remain the sewage pipe. Okay, so I can be a sewage pipe or I can be this beautiful golden bridge that's bringing about these golden waters or I can even go up higher into this beautiful aqueduct and bring about these crystal pristine waters coming through me. And you can all do it. Every single one of you. 
The only thing that prevents you from doing that is excuse. And that excuse is not even coming from you. It's coming from an ego, right? It's coming from a knot in here. And that's what you have to learn to untie. You need to untie the genetic knot of the shadow ego, of the ahamkara, right? That's the key. Okay, let's go to, and thank you, Mihail, for your question. Let's go to Kim. Kim says, will the internet shut down during the 10 days of darkness? Well, there's some problems with your question here, Kim, because who says that 10 days of darkness are coming? Okay, so this is where there's kind of a, an ain't, right, with your question. Because we're saying, well, who, where, what's this 10 days of darkness? What is this 10 days of darkness about? Because I'm not aware of any 10 days of darkness. Okay. The only time I've talked about days of darkness was probably around 2037 and 2038. And I don't even know if that's for sure. Right. That's something that I've felt in the past was definite. But I'm kind of feeling like it's a little bit more flexible now. I think maybe some can experience that, some cannot. Right. So I don't know anything about this 10 days of darkness. I know that the people are thinking, oh, there's going to be some sort of big shutdown coming together. I've looked into those things, and I haven't really seen anything of that nature. No. This is not going to bring about a great scarcity tactic where everybody's just in panic and frantic and all that stuff. That's not where we're going. I don't see that happening. Right. So I don't see anything in regards to an internet shutdown during 10 days of darkness. I just don't see that. Okay, that's just my own perspective. But really the whole idea, Kim, is looking to yourself, right? If I'm tuning into that right now, okay, is there any particular type of event that is ahead that would represent a 10 days of, I'm just getting a big, mm -mm. <laughs> no, no. Is there a big internet shutdown that will last quite a while? No. There will be fluctuations in certain areas, but it will not lead to a 10 days of darkness or, or a blackout with internet shutdown. I'm not seeing that at all as well too. And all I'm doing is I'm just observing the lines of the earth, right? I'm tuning into the earth right now. I'm just speaking to her right now, right? So when I asked about the 10 days of darkness, I'm just getting this image of a shaking head. Nope. <laughs> so again, the idea of 10 days of internet outage, nope, nope. But fluctuations, it's kind of like we'll see blips. We'll see blips here, a little bit of fluctuations here with certain internet service in certain areas of the planet, but nothing long withstanding. Right? Very, very temporary, very short. There may be certain sites that may go out, popular sites that may go down temporarily, but then come back up again. So we're basically just seeing blips. We're seeing fluxes. But I'm not seeing anything in regards to long-standedness of 10 days of darkness or, or outages of internet for that long of a period. Okay? That's just what I'm getting through, uh, through intuition here. Okay? Thank you, Kim, for your question. Let's go forward uh, down a list a bit more. A reminder, guys, I'll be on um, uh, signposts live tomorrow, Wednesday, uh, Thursday, I should say, on Rumble at 10 a.m. Pacific. Okay, so if you want to join me, uh, just go to uh, rumble.com slash signpost live. That's all one word, signpost live, and you can join me there for tomorrow. Okay. All right. Um, now, Jonas has already asked this question, has already been answered, asked this question, he's answered it already, okay, but we'll, we'll look into a reflection of it. Maria says, we were always told to never look at the sun during a solar eclipse without wearing special glasses because we could go blind. Well, in a way, that's true because that's an incredible focused amount of energy. What you're basically looking at is you're looking at an incredible point source energy, so it's true, okay? Don't look at an eclipse, okay? Just like you don't look up at the sun, don't look at the eclipse because you are looking at like two mirrors that are magnifying an intense amount of energy. And if you're looking at that, you're getting that point source and that can seriously affect your eyesight. That is true. Okay. Be careful with that. And you may, it may be a good idea that if you do go out, you should probably have some special glasses or just do your best to not look at it. Right. What I would suggest is if you're having eclipses, don't go outside, stay indoors. Right just for as long as the eclipse is there. I've talked about this for years. I've always said the same thing. Uh, and it's even the indigenous people agree with me. So when, you, when you're having an eclipse, you best stay indoors, right? Stay sheltered and let the eclipse run its, run its course. Do not go outside of it because you're basically getting contaminated. Unless you want to go ahead and completely detoxify yourself out. What that is doing is that is burning a hole directly into the earth, right? That is burning a scorching hole. That scorching hole is very subtle energy, but you're having all of this debris coming out. It's, it's like a purging, 
right? It's kind of like taking a medical laser and just cutting the skin, and you're going to see a bunch of blood and ooze coming out of it all together. This exact same thing is happening with the earth, right? It's not a fun time to go out and play, okay? This is not play time with an eclipse. You need to let the eclipse run its course. So my recommendation for years has always been, if you can, please stay indoors, stay sheltered. Let the eclipse run its course. When it's done, go out and play, okay? But do your best to stay to stay sheltered. Just let the eclipse run its course. Purify your environment. Go take a salt bath, okay? Have a sea salt bath on that day, okay? If you were outside even after the eclipse is over, go take a sea salt bath, okay? Or if you need to, if you only have a shower, then here's the thing I can suggest is getting a spray bottle, putting warm water and some of that salt in, shaking it up really, really good, and spray yourself down with that salt water, okay? That's another thing you can do. So if you guys don't have a bath, get a spray bottle, an empty spray bottle, fill it with warm water, put your salts into it, mix it up really good, shake it really good, and just have that kind of long spray and just spray it all around you. Spray, 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 spray. Keep it on for about three to five minutes and then wash it off with a shower, okay? Those are for the you who do not have a bathtub, okay? Because I've had that. Brad, I don't have a bathtub. What can I do with a sea salt bath? Then you get a sea salt spray, okay? You get a sea salt spray bottle, spray yourself down, leave it on for about three to five minutes, rinse it off, okay? And that's what you can do. And just keep yourself healthy. Keep yourself in good shape. Keep yourself in alignment because that's a dirty time, right? As good as solar eclipses bring a lot of goodness out of the world, they do. It's a surgery that's going on, okay? You're, you're like trying to walk into a surgery room and clash and banging, right? All these symbols. Boom, oh, hey guys, look at me. I'm funky, I'm funky, I'm funky. What are you doing? This is a surgery room. Get the hell out of here, <laughs> right? The earth is undergoing surgery, okay? That's what an eclipse is. It's an energetic surgery for the earth. It's removing very specific things because you see exactly with the great american solar eclipse that's starting in texas and moving its way up the north you see that we had one in 2017 and that we basically have an x going right across the united states right now that is not a uh, coincidence okay that's a surgery okay when you look at a lot of these different places that are getting hit with eclipses these are not just random this is a surgery it is engineered it is an engineered harmonic surgery for the earth so just like you wouldn't go inside a surgery room banging drums, playing cymbals, blowing the kazoos, having doctors, you know, whipping you in the butt and telling you to get the hell out of here, I would suggest you do that too, is just stay indoors. Let the eclipse run its course, have a sea salt bath and cleanse, and let whatever needs to come about, come about, okay? That's been my suggestion for years. It's up to you guys to take it. Okay. Oh, we're on time here. Okay, we're going to probably take about one or two more questions. Uh, okay. Okay, I'm just going to go further down. I've already talked about the eclipse. Um, let's go further down. Okay, here's one from Reba. Could Adrona speak about the moon, please? Is it a solid object? Is it a portal? Why is it often transparent? Is it really just the atmosphere that makes it appear that way? Adronis has talked immensely about the moon, Reba, okay? So I'm just gonna give you a sum up because there's so much stuff, even on my channel, with moon talk that Adronis has talked about, okay? Number one, the moon is an artificial satellite. It is a spaceship, okay? That's the nature of the moon. The moon is not a natural uh, planetoid that you could say, right? If it called a lunar, a lunar uh, planetoid, whatever. It's not that. It basically represents an observation story, uh, observation lab, it is a laboratory. It is a monitoring station, and it also has a lot of ancient technology. It basically has a lot of frequency technology that basically works together with subtle frequencies that can disrupt the natural course of patterns on the planet Earth. The good news is a lot of that is being shut down. Right? Uh, but basically, uh, one of your other questions, is it a portal? No, but it has portal devices on it. Okay? Like I said, it is a spacecraft. It is able to move on its own power. It is an orbiting spacecraft. It does have portal technology. It does have very commonly what uh, many insiders have referred to as jump rooms, okay? Where you basically go inside a room and so like a shift psh, and the door opens and all of a sudden you're on the moon, okay? So it has things like that. It has portal devices, yes. 
Why is it often transparent? Because it's a holographic image that's being placed upon the surface to give you the impression that it's barren when in fact it's not. Okay? It is a holographic overlay and based upon certain forms of technologies it can appear like there's a blip, it can appear like it's softer, it can feel like it's a lighter hue, right? It can almost feel like again there's a transparency there because that is holographic technology that the moon uses because it's covering up a lot of stuff that is on its front. And there's even more sophisticated stuff at its rear, at its back, the dark side of the moon, okay? Uh, is it really just the atmosphere that makes it appear that way? It has an atmosphere, okay? The moon has an atmosphere. If it don't, did not have an atmosphere, you would not see moonlight, okay? Moonlight in that sense is basically the atmosphere absorbing the sun's radiation, okay? The sun's radiation absorbs upon the moon's atmosphere, and that's why you have a bright moon. That's why you have moonlight, right? The moon does not have its own light. It needs that radiation from the sun to therefore form its own light, okay? So just like the earth has its own atmosphere, right? But its light is coming through a alchemical response, a catalyst transformation of the sun. The sun is not some fiery furnace. That is a Neanderthal perspective. The sun itself is a singularity, okay? It's a living well, as Adronis would put it. It's basically filled with uh, magnetism and dielectric, okay? It's a torus field. It's a hyperboloid, and basically it's radiating this because it's a healthy sun, right? It's a healthy sun radiating these particular forms of frequencies. And these frequencies can best be measured if we have vibrations per minute or vibrations per second technology apparatus, okay? It's exactly what Nikola Tesla was trying to develop, is basically looking at things at vibrations per second and vibrations per minute, okay? If we're looking at the uh, intensity of the radiation that the sun is casting upon the earth, it would be going well into the millions of vibrations per second. It'd be tremendous, okay? Nikola Tesla was looking to build something that would mimic that, that would basically create a second, second sun in our sky that he could basically uh, get energy off of, right? That basically would replicate the amount of vibrations in the atmosphere per second to basically oscillate it at such a higher frequency that it actually creates a sun. The mantis shrimp, if you guys are familiar with the mantis shrimp, that it has the most hardest attack of the animal kingdom, that its punch creates sonoluminescence in the water. If you guys have watched my video about the true nature of the sun, that's one of the videos I suggest you watch on my channel. The true nature of the sun, because I talk about sonoluminescence, I talk about the water vapor in the atmosphere, and that's the kick. That's exactly what creates the spark of light that brings about heat and light onto our planet during daytime hours, right? The sun is not some fiery furnace. It does not have solar flares. There's no such thing as a solar flare coming from the sun. That is a Neanderthal perspective. The sun does not work that way. It radiates, at best to what we can understand, a type of radioactive plasma. And that plasma radiation is what's dispersing evenly throughout the entire system through a geometrical harmonic coming upon the atmospheres, creating a configuration of heat and light, bouncing those radiation elements back and forth from the earth surface back into the atmosphere again, where oxygen is being the medium. Okay. The fact that other planets can do that as well, too, indicates that they are all oxygenated planets. Oxygen is a norm for many planets throughout the star system, throughout the entire universe, I would say. Throughout our galaxy, throughout our universe. Pretty much all uh, planets have oxygen, okay? It doesn't matter if it's a small amount or if it's a large amount, that is a catalyst that is needed for a planet to be a planet. Okay? It may have a higher degree of methane, but nonetheless, it still has oxygen. Nonetheless, it still has hydrogen. Nonetheless, it still has nitrogen. Do you guys know oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, methane, etc.? They're all frequencies of light. They are light that represents condensing into a gaseous form through the element of the atmosphere surrounding the planet that enables that gaseous form to be cultivated. The atmosphere of the planet is what's turning that light into gaseous substances. And it all comes through the different frequencies of light because the sun has them all. 
The sun has hydrogen. The sun has oxygen. The sun has nitrogen. The sun has everything that represents the periodic table that is coming through different bands of light that is therefore coming upon the atmosphere of a planet to where the planet will now condense that light into gaseous forms, enabling that atmosphere to thrive. That's how it works. Science can't explain that to you. Okay, but spirit can. So everything that makes up oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, etc. are light rays coming from the sun through our atmosphere, creating a condensing of gaseous anomalies, representing those forms of gases that we utilize on a daily basis here on this planet. Hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, methane, everything. All of that is produced through the rays of the sun through a catalytic process that is now being brought forward into the atmosphere that creates a condensing of those gases all together. That's why when you worry about ozone layers and all that stuff, it can be naturally self-repaired because the destruction has mostly come from artificial means, not from natural means. Okay? The sun is what's responsible for everything that makes up this planet. Everything. Everything that we need. The solidity of the soil, hard and light. Water itself, hard and light. Oxygen itself, hard and light. Hydrogen itself, hard and light. Everything basically has hydrogen. Hydrogen is the primordial substance here. It all comes through sun. All comes through the radiation. All comes through the plasma. All comes through the content of the sun itself. Right? So, when you take that moon and you put that together with the sun, you are creating a powerful point source. Right? And that's why, again, I say you want to try and stay out of that uh, eclipse. Because that is a powerful point source focused laser. And you want to stay out of that. So, Reba, I hope that makes sense pertaining to the moon. All right, I know you weren't really talking about the eclipse, but I thought I'd add that little tidbit because we talked about that earlier. All right, so let's go with one more question, guys, and we're going to go into group healing, and then we're going to wrap up, okay? So let's see if I go down, I go further down the list here a bit more, okay? Okay. Okay, I think I'll end with Jan's question here. Uh, Jan says, uh, hi Brad, can Adronas tell us how we can protect a place from burglary, thieves, etc.? Maybe with some sort of creating a magnetic field with protection. Thank you. Okay, one moment. And thank you, Jan, for your question. We are here, and we thank you very much, Jan, for your question. Well, being able to protect a property in that way, really the whole idea is that it needs to come through you. So you see, here's the idea. No matter what type of work you decide to do energetically around your property, if you feel vulnerable to the idea of thievery, burglary, break-ins, attacks, assaults in that way, then that space is simply not going to hold out. So again, you need to be in sync with the alignments of vibration that you're putting around your space. So again, if you are performing any particular type of rituals, if you are going within and you are doing energy work throughout your entire space, you need to be that frequency. The most important thing about how you feel that you are completely devoid of any of those particular forms of happenings is that you don't ever see them happening to you. You are conscious of them, but you're completely at peace with those things. And you radiate that throughout everything that you touch throughout your property by touching a tree, by touching the grass, by touching the structure of your home. And you're taking that feeling and you're imprinting it all across your property. So if you have a home here out with an acreage, for example, and you just feel that, you do a meditation, you feel enriched by yourself. You feel again that everything is at peace, everything's in harmony. Now that you are charged in that way, start touching the walls of your home. Go outside and touch a tree. Go outside and touch the grass. Go outside and touch your vehicle. Go to your animals on your acreage, for example, and touch them with that delightful feeling. That's it. Adronis, that's all we have to do. That's all you have to do because you're the beacon. You're the beacon representing that energy where nothing in regards to those travesties happen. 
because you're completely you're completely aware of it. All right, there can be a travesty where there's burglary. I'm completely in harmony with that, which means I've made peace with that situation, which means I'm not bothered by that outcome. I'm not bothered by the idea of a break-in. I'm not bothered by this. I'm not bothered by that. I completely harmonize myself. I charge myself up. And all there is right now is harmony. And now I hold that charge. And now I touch everything within my space. Bringing that charge to everything. Holding that charge together. Done. You've done it. But see, you're not doing this for protection. If you're doing this for protection, you're still vulnerable, and it is very unlikely that that particular situation will hold up. You wanting protection shows that you are impaired, and that you are vulnerable, and you are suffering. You cannot get any goodness out of that. There's no harmony that comes there. So rather than the need of trying to be protected, just go into harmony. Look into all these situations and seeing how you've made peace with them. You are not bothered by them. You are not reacting to them. You're saying, this is a beautiful space. This is my beautiful sacred space. And the sacredness is what is ripe and alive here. And we can guarantee you that when you're in that alignment and you're touching all of these points upon your space, you will never have any of those situations because you are not feeling that you're doing this for protection. You are absolutely certain that harmony reigns supreme around your space. Just put harmony around your space and let everything else take care of itself. That is the answer. All right. We thank all of you for the opportunity of this interaction today. I am Adronis of Sirius and we will now conclude and return to the conduit. Goodbye for now. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody, for your questions. We're going to end now with a distance healing, a group healing together. Okay. So <clears throat> we're going to go ahead now and do some uh, forgiveness ball, just as we did before. So for that to happen, just get yourself nice and comfortable. If you're seated down, okay, get your spine nice and straight. Let's take a deep breath in. Deep breath out, longer exhale. Okay, and now I just want you to take your hands, put them together, and just rub in them for 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, now that you have done that, just form a ball. Okay, and now just using one hand, you're just taking that ball, just going right at the top of the head, and you're just saying any debris, any toxicities, any conflict, physically, mentally, emotionally, that's within me. It is now ready to leave. Just see it enveloping itself directly into this chi ball. As you're going down very slowly, down through the body, down to the waist, going down to the legs, going all the way down to the bottom of the feet. Moving yourself back up nice and slowly. And now you have that ball and you're just expanding it a little bit more, expanding it a little bit more. So it's about shorter, shoulder width apart, okay? So right to about here, okay? So it's like you're holding a big beach ball in your hand and you can feel all of that debris floating throughout that ball, okay? And all I want you to do right now is I want you just to concentrate on the center, the nucleus of that ball, okay? And now we're just slowly starting to bring the ball together by saying forgiveness, okay? You can say that out loud or in your mind, right? Forgiveness. Forgiveness, forgiveness, be gentle with yourself, right? You're not being insistent. You're not being harsh. It's a soft forgiveness. Forgiveness is soft. It is subtle. It is gentle. Forgiveness, 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 forgiveness. Touching the hands together in prayer posture. And then just one big uh, claim of forgiveness, either mentally or verbally. Just bring it up and handing it to the ethers, right? Forgiveness. Okay. That's all there is to it. That's the forgiveness ball. It's so simple, right? Just be soft, be subtle, be delicate, be gentle with yourself, right? Bring a lot of the femininity. Guys, you especially. Okay. Oh, forgiveness. Oh, forgiveness. Oh, forgiveness. Nothing's going to budge. 
Okay? Forgiveness, 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 forgiveness. It's your femininity, right? Guys, you have it. Okay? Women have masculinity as well, too. We all have those polarities. Be gentle, be soft, be caressing, be delicate. Okay? Putting those hands together and then one big forgiveness. Bring it back into the ethers, feeling clean, and just sit with that cleanliness that you've been able to attain through yourself. Okay? Thank you, everybody, for joining me today for the Wisdom Transmissions Gathering. I will see you all tomorrow, again, on Rumble. The website is rumble.com slash signpostlive, all one word, signpostlive. I think I can start putting that up on a, uh, a text here next week. Uh, but join me there tomorrow as we're going to be looking into some interesting topics on current events. All right. Thank you again, everybody. This Sunday, I'll also be doing a uh, live stream, a Theorics live stream. So it's youtube.com slash at Etherics store. That is the, the Etherics YouTube channel. You can join me there this Sunday at 10 a.m. Pacific. We'll be doing some giveaways. I'll be giving you some updates on the uh, Radiate app as well, too, and some new products that are coming, including the Superlight. All right. Thank you so much. Take care, everybody. Blessings to you all. Namaskar, and may it be well with you.